Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new and you haven't been here before then you're very very welcome. We've had a few new people join recently which is brilliant so everyone who's been here for ages please make them feel very welcome if they comment. This week I'm going to be showing you how to make this rather pleasing pendant slash necklace because if you're anything like me, you may have in the past found yourself rushing around the shops on Christmas Eve thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna get for so-and-so? And then buying them something that you know they're gonna either not like or throw away or is just a waste of everybody's time and effort. So if you really want to give a gift that somebody will be thrilled to have, touch wood, then keep on watching because I'm going to show you how to make this lovely pendant and before we get into the video this is the time to like, subscribe if you haven't already and do please consider buying me a Christmas Kofi. My Kofi page details are in the description so without further ado Let's get into my jewellery tutorial. So the first thing that I've done is measured out approximately uh, 20 centimetres of wire. And this is the, where's it gone? 17 gauge wire. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to make a loop in the top. So here we get about, I suppose it's about an inch, maybe two and a half centimetres, something like that. And then getting either flat pliers or needle nose pliers, bend it over away from you to make a right angle like this. Then using your round pliers or needle nosed pliers, whatever you want to call them, you roll it back towards you, grip it sort of about a third of the way down, something like that, roll it back towards you so that you've got a shape like this and then you can roll it a little bit further over so that you've got a shape like this and then hold it very tight and either with your thumb or with another uh, set of pliers you roll it round like this so then you can hold it very tight with these pliers and as I say if you're very strong you can use your thumb, but I am not very strong, so I'm using another set of pliers just to wind it around and let's make sure that you can see, make sure I can see what I'm doing as well. And it should just come around like that. And then you can um, straighten it up, make sure it's nice and vertical, and then you can just um, clip off the sticky out bit that you don't need. Always put your hand over when you're nipping the ends off because it can fly off and hit you in the eye. And then later on, we'll get a file and file that down. You can just give it a squeeze. So that's the first bit. Okay, so what we wanna do now is start to get the shape that we're gonna want. So first of all, we grip here and we turn it out 90 degrees so the loop is going to be facing us straight forward and the 90 degrees is going to go 
on the same plane, if you know what I mean. So that's the first thing to do. And you can do this with pliers or your fingers. You can bend it round. Oh, sorry. Oh dear, kicking the camera around. You can bend it um, around anything really. But I happen to have this six step plier which is very handy and I'm gonna use which size I'll probably use the smallest size and holding it tight I mean you can use anything that's round a pen a um, what's the word chopstick anything that's round that you can bend the wire around I'm trying to do it so you can see which is why it looks very cack handed but when you do this I don't know how the real jewellery people do this it's such a job to get it in the right place so you can see what I'm doing then give it a little bit of a squeeze down there how's that that's a bit better so that's the first one and then you go out the same distance again because that's where we were to start off with because that's the front because that's where this comes across so we're going to do the second one which is about it's about there isn't it really something like that so I'll just do it as I do it and then come back and show you like this again give it a bit of a squeeze if you can and then it's going to come out to the side again I'm going to take the next biggest loop so a slightly bigger pen or round thing or whatever you're using and start slightly further out and then we take it round and basically it's just it's just a matter of repeating the step as you go along at increasingly large loop sizes and increasingly wide widths increasingly wide widths which sounds a bit weird but you know what I mean and you could use longer wire and make this much longer or you could um, not it's up to you this one's not going to be super long as you can see because we're just going to bring this around here that's that one isn't it no that's that one I'm going to bring that round there and as you can see you've got like a nice sort of flowy um, almost organic sort of shape if I can get it to behave two seconds while I sort this out I'll be right back okay I've got it to slightly behave a little bit better and as you can see this is the front um, with the winding round bit going here so what we want to do is using either this or the um, round uh, needle nose pliers that we had last time up to you whichever you use and then we just grip this last bit and this is where you can decide how you like it to look I'm just going to squidge this in a tiny bit more you can move bits around you can squeeze it out squeeze it in make the sort of shape that you want to make and then we will move on to the next part of the process and the next part of the process is using this utterly 
cute and delightful little anvil, which I clearly stole from some elves that were passing, um, I'm going to put a duster over it because it keeps flashing in the camera and changing the light settings, but you don't really need to do that. So I don't want to hammer this bit at the top and I don't want to hammer this loop at the bottom. I do want to hammer the rest of it. So I'm taking my little darling little hammer and I'm going to hammer it. And the reason I'm going to hammer it, and obviously it's going to move around and you have to keep an eye on it. When you hammer it, you get this lovely texture. And it really catches the light and looks very nice and very um, artisanal. You know, like someone who knows what they're doing has worked upon it. So there it is. I think it looks much nicer this way. Um, that was the back. This is the front. So we'll do the front and I'll be right back. When you do hammer things, they will change shape. They will try and misbehave from what you want them to be doing. So you just have to go in with your pliers and get them to do what you want them to do. Especially this bottom bit, um, the loop that we made, we really need that to be quite closed indeed. So we give that a good old squeeze that is most of the wire part. Okay, so we're moving on to the next section of the process, and that is to add some beads to the pendant. And I've got a little pot of miscellaneous beadage here, and I've got, let's see, we've got some clear ones, we've got some Oh, we've got all sorts here. Even some almost moonstone coloured ones. Um, like this one on my ring here and on my ring here. So now the other thing about this bit is, is that you don't need to have all these different sorts of wire, really. You could do this part with thread or wool or... Um, anything really so this little thin wire is 22 gauge um so i'm gonna choose what shall i choose i'm gonna choose one of these gunmetal ones and i'm gonna take about how much about this much wire which is approximately, let's have a look, three, four, five, it's about seven centimeters. Pop the bead in the middle and then bend up both sides. Give it a squeeze and then you get the bead like that. Then you take your pendant shape that you've made you put the bead at the end of one of the uh, arms, let's say, and then you start to wrap the wire or the thread or whatever you're going to use. You wrap it around the arm. It is a lot easier than I am making it look because I'm trying to get it so you can see what I'm doing and please excuse my nails I did them the other day and you know what it's like they look fine and dandy until you need to um, film yourself and then of course you catch them on something and here I am using the pliers again just to wind it round tightly, squidge it up like that, 
bring it over again and I'll just do it one more time on this side I mean the good thing about if you have got this other wire is that you don't need to tie any knots or glue it which is what you'd have to do if you used thread but that doesn't really matter you can just squidge it into itself like that and then you get the other side hold it there so it doesn't misbehave I mean you can obviously widen the gaps um, and then push them back again after you've done this bit so we're winding it we're winding it come here and you carry on until you've got that bit finished there and then we've got two more bits to do so I'll just go ahead and do those and then I'll come back and show you what we do at the bottom right as you can see I've finished putting the beads on I've put a really tiny one up here I did two of the gunmetal ones and then I did two of these sort of slightly faceted black ones and you can see that the connecting wires become part of the design so if you are doing this with thread or cord or any sort of um, alternative material then you could do it with something contrasting and that might look nice as well so this is how far it is and the next step is to attach something to our bottom loop so stand by and I'll be right back and here are a selection of the sort of things that you could dangle from the end of your pendant we've got a crystal we've got a couple of crosses there's a nice bead with a bit of chain attached to it. I'm quite fond of that. I've got a little wing here. I think that one looks quite nice too. Got a lovely spider. A little bat. I think that looks quite nice actually. A little bat. Obviously we've got a moon. I think that might be a tad on the big side. A little hand of Fatima. A Jack Skellington. And a key which also looks nice. And then we've got this little pendant here which has got arrows on one side and then on the other side says you are the master of your own destiny so I think I'm going to go with I think I'm going to go with the angel wing actually so I'm going to get what we need to attach the angel wing and I will be right back right I've got here a various selection of what we call jump rings and I'm going to open up this small one and the thing with these little rings is that you have to always open them sideways never pull them apart always open them by twisting she says not being able to do it there we go it's because I haven't got my reading glasses on you see there so we twist it open and luckily this little wing has got a piece of chain attached to it already so I must have cannibalized it off another piece of jewelry and we pop it on here and then twist it back together so it's nice and safe and there that looks nice I think that looks really nice um, and then all you need to do is put a well I've chosen a slightly larger ring to put at the top let's just get this open shall we two seconds there and we're going to pop it at the top like this there we go and that means that whatever you're attaching it to let's move these out of the way 
whether you're going to put it on a chain for somebody or whether you're just going to put it on a piece of cord or that looks quite nice actually contrasting with the black I might do that um, so whatever you're going to put it on it will hang flat as long as you've got a ring on the top of it and as I say I think that would make an extremely acceptable gift for anybody really um, the bat of course would be slightly gothier so let's see if we had the bat on there it would look like that which is pretty nice or if we had the pentacle it would look like that and then you could either you could make a bigger one and have the moon hanging off it because I really think that is too big for this size or you could make much much smaller ones and make a pair of earrings for somebody so with this sort of design frankly I know everyone says this about everything but the possibilities really are if not endless then diverse and multitudinous so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cord on this and then I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to show you me wearing it so stand by and here it is the finished item I think it looks really quite nice indeed I'm very happy with it and I really really hope you have a go because handmade homemade are always the best presents and if you know anyone that is in need of a lovely pendant slash necklace slash Christmas slash Gothmas slash Yule gift then this might be the way to go um, try not to spend too much over Christmas a lot of things are just pointless wastes of time and money try not to eat too unhealthily as well because you'll only feel bad about it afterwards and don't forget join me next week and we'll see what else I can summon up for your viewing pleasure in the meantime everybody stay safe stay well look after all your lovely creatures and of course please stay strange bye for now everybody see you next time